my mom had passed away from a really, really quick bout with pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. And throughout the process of her illness and very short chemo time and hospicing, mm -hmm. I'd had incredible peace, mm -hmm. supernatural peace. The ability to stand in the middle of the storm and know like I am lashed to the mast of his name. He is yeah. with me. Yeah. And so that, that lasted and carried me through that season. But when she went and passed away, I entered into this season where that tangible, felt mm -hmm. sense of peace seemed super distant. And mm -hmm. the way that it was manifest in my life was that I found myself sitting in the back row of the balcony of our church. I'm, I'm the wife of the worship pastor of the church, and so I always sit in the front row. You know what I mean? I'm always up close. Even when we weren't at this church, I was the kind of girl that, that was like, I'm glad when they said unto me, let us go up to the house of the Lord, right? And I found myself in the very back row, and I couldn't sing, and I couldn't pray, and I realized that my body was telling a truth on me that my mouth could not speak. And that truth, or my understanding of that truth was that I was in disharmony mm. with God. I mean, he had never moved. He had done nothing wrong, obviously. But there was this desire. There was this space. There was this Grand Canyon mm -hmm. between him and myself. And I don't know how long this went on. And people were noticing it without saying anything. But it, it went on for a, for a hot second. And at a certain point, I don't know why, uh, I began to open, just, just crack the door, you know, when you just crack the door yeah. to, the, to the Holy Spirit. And I began to worship again. Mm -hmm. And worship for me has always been my most intimate space, intimate communion uh, with the Lord. And it was, it was just a crack. And the crack was all he needed. And he did what he always does. He just begins to flood in, but flood in gently. And don't y'all know, shortly thereafter, I started moving up till I got to the front row of the balcony. And then I got to the back row of downstairs and then up and up and up until I was back on that front row. But I was in that front row changed. I was in that front row um, feeling a sense of reconciliation with God, if yeah. that even makes sense, a restoration yeah. Yeah. of the peace between us. Well, I'm crying because I relate so much to that story. And Lisa knows this story well, but my last pregnancy in the third trimester, I was diagnosed with a very rare condition, like four in every 1 million pregnancies. Mm -hmm. I couldn't walk. I was in excruciating pain. I had to get around in crutches and in a wheelchair, and it was terrible. The prognosis I got was, Karen, you may walk, May, mm. six to nine months after you deliver, mm. you may not ever walk normal, though. Mm. If you do walk, you may not walk normal again. Mm -hmm. And I was so, for lack, I was, I was angry. Mm -hmm. I was angry with God. Mm -hmm. And I had spent years in that prideful place of like, I trust God. Mm -hmm. I trust him because, I mean, how could you ever be angry with God? If he's, mm -hmm. you know, if Jesus never did anything for you ever again, how could you be angry? He's, he gave his life for you. How mm -hmm. could you ever be angry? That's how prideful I was in that. But here I was in that situation. And I'm a worship leader. I've done worship for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I wanted to do was to be in the presence of God because mm -hmm. I was so mad. Mm -hmm. I was so disillusioned. I was so disappointed. I knew he could heal me. Why wasn't he healing me? Hmm. I knew he could take me out of that storm. He said he would take me out of the storm. Why wasn't he taking me to the other side? Why was I not seeing the goodness of the Lord in the land mm -hmm. of the living? Why was he not doing everything I know him mm -hmm. to do and everything I know him to be? One touch from him would have healed me. And oh my goodness, the testimony. And mm -hmm. oh my goodness, this. And just like you, it was like, okay, where did that door crack? And I remember talking to a pastor friend of mine and he was like, Karen, if we believe what Romans 8, 28 says, that all things work together for good for those that love mm -hmm. the Lord, mm -hmm. then this will work out for your good and for his glory. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I want you to praise him mm -hmm. for the situation. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him like he was crazy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, are you kidding me? I can't walk and I may never walk normal. And you're telling me I have to praise him for this? Mm -hmm. 
And in my anger, I was like, no, but I'm an achiever. <laughs> like we mm -hmm. talked about a few days ago. I was like, all right, fine. I have nothing better to do. I'm just laying here all day. I'll praise you. I praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Mm -hmm. and thank you for, for this hip. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you for all of this. Thank you for, for hurting my hip. Okay, great. And it was just <laughs> lip service at first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I'd open my Bible and I'd read a proverb a day because I got nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, which isn't bad. I'm just like scripture a day. Right. Like yeah. I just said something, you know, because yeah. it meant nothing to me. Yeah. And eventually, eventually, because in the deepest parts of me, I still wanted a relationship with him, yeah, right? Yeah. I Absolutely. knew I couldn't live yeah. life without Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Yeah. I knew I couldn't live life without yeah. his presence. So mm -hmm. gradually I started coming out of the fog, slowly coming mm -hmm. out of it, slowly re remembering all the markers in my life mm -hmm. where he has been good. Yeah. All the markers in my mm -hmm. life where he has yeah. been faithful. I shouldn't be here. I put a knife to my wrist when I was yeah. a teenager, mm -hmm. yeah. right? There's all these different things I could share with you guys yeah. of his goodness and his faithfulness. Yeah. So right now the storm may be brewing. Right yeah. now the joy cannot be found. Right now you don't want to enter into mm. his presence. Right now you don't want to be sitting on that front mm. row. You don't want this. There is no way you feel like you can have rec reconciliation with the God of the universe. Yeah. But just whoever is watching and anybody mm -hmm. here even in this circle that we remember the sovereignty, the goodness, mm -hmm. the faithfulness, yeah. the character of who God is. Yeah. And remembering that, I think, really helps yeah. reconcile us yes. mm -hmm. to the beauty of the Father. And to Absolutely. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.